For myself, when I was three years old, I told my mother I wanted to be a writer when I grew up. So that's me. Well, she was quite supportive at first, and well, I know this because uh, she always called me a dreamer and had this photo of me in one of my albums. You can see the caption up there. Apparently, I have been a dreamer ever since I was young. So being supportive, she would supply me with paper, pencils, notebooks, even taught me how to use Microsoft Word back when it was Windows 98. And, but I think my parents expected me to just forget about the whole thing, grow up, sober up, do something professional like law in the university. So you can imagine to their horror when I announced at age 18 that I fully intended to study creative writing or mass communication. I think most of you seated here might think that as the maker of the I Still Have a Dream video, I would have lived the life of empowered dream chasing and walked into my dream career upon graduation. Well, the truth is, nothing happens the way they tell you it does in school. I didn't have ad agencies knocking on my door as much as I wish they would. And I didn't know which company I wanted to apply for, even though I had graduated and was free to make the choice. It was like standing in a giant supermarket of options, you know. Options that may not pick you just because you chose to pick them. And above all, my parents and many people around me were supporters of the just settle for anything that comes your way theory. Send your resume to 1,000 companies, something's bound to stick, right? And this happens to be their theory also for how to find a boyfriend, but <laughs> that's another story. Thankfully, how I met your mother taught me that there are two kinds of people in this world, the reachers and the settlers. And as much as this theory was formed in the context of dating, and that's part of the reason why I'm still single, I want to put it forth to you today in the context of life itself. It's quite self-explanatory, actually. Reachers, who are reachers? Reachers are the people who are not happy with the status quo. The normal way things turn out, normal routes that people take. They are the dreamers, the believers, the courageous. The crazy ones, actually, as Steve Jobs termed them back in 1997, the round pegs in the square holes. And on the other hand, we have the settlers, people who settle. Well, I guess they're quite happy flowing along with society, despite maybe having an inkling that they were made for something more than what they've been, expect like they've been accepting as fate all their lives. They call it fate. Some of you here might know people who don't think they have dreams they want to fulfill. They just want to live, to survive, to settle down. And, well, in case you have not realized yet, I belong to the Reachers. And I'm here to tell you today to settle to not settle, ever. That disconnect between reaching and settling is what makes the I Still Have a Dream video that you just watched so emotionally powerful. And it's the reason why I made it in the first place, actually, to get everyone here to start thinking about those two sides of the cardboard. One that shows how we've all somehow already settled for something practical in our lives, and the other which reveals our heart of hearts, our deepest desires, our secret aspirations. Dreams of adventure, freedom, passion, and reaching for our ideals. The stuff that life should be made of, but so often, is not. And as a chronic dreamer myself, I had been fighting against those two opposing forces all my life. Back when I was in junior college, I made the difficult decision to switch from the more popular science stream to the art stream after admitting to myself that I was never going to pass a chemistry exam without a lot of prayer and a lot of suffering. And turns out that my best and most enjoyed subjects were geography and literature, which were subjects I took under the arts course. But I thought to myself, you know, how was I supposed to know earlier that this was my thing? Both my parents were science students themselves, and to them, the humanities were always secondary to the sciences. And again, in Singapore Management University, where we coincidentally are today, I felt the immense pressure to choose those popular, profitable, if you know what I mean, majors, in law or finance, and for the longest time could not bring myself to just admit that I wanted to study marketing and corporate communication because those were my strengths, my interests. Well, of course, I'm 100% glad that I made the right choice for myself in the end, which is why I'm going to go out on a limb here today and tell you that if you don't want to do something and have a choice not to do it, don't do it. 
right? Always be true to yourself. And I think that that's the easiest way, actually. If you think about it, knowing what you don't want to do is so much easier than knowing what you exactly want to do, right? I mean, the list of the things you don't want to do is probably longer than the things that you want to do. And it's the easiest way, actually, to remain true to yourself despite all the two cents worth of advice that uh, all the two cents worth of advice that people are going to be throwing your way every single time you need to make a life decision. And this isn't about quitting instead of persevering. It's about persevering wisely for the things in life that add value to you as a unique human being with unique strengths and a unique calling. So while Oprah Winfrey herself calls it doing your best in this moment to put you in the best place for the next moment. So don't do something that you can't wait to get out of or are waiting for that magical moment to fall in love with. Well, or even worse, um, waiting to earn enough money to buy yourself the freedom to do it later. Right, which is so common with so many of us, if you think about it. So I have to say, dream and dream big now. Remember that you were given youth so that you would have the energy and slightly blind courage to prove stuff to yourself, mess up, but still have time to start again. Well, reaching has nothing to do with finding the perfect job that your friends will all envy you for. It's about finding the perfect job for you, the one that makes strategic sense to your dreams the one that brings you one step closer to making the difference that you were born to make in this world. And, well, Sally Hawkshead and her team at Fascinate recently posted on Facebook, I saw, that your best career is an expression of yourself. What you do should reflect who you are. So don't use your peers or statistics to tell you what you should be doing with your life. They're merely guidelines and not rules. And even better, use your dreams to guide you because they are a compass to your destiny. On a recent trip to Japan, I learned of this interesting ethos they have that goes like this. The nail that sticks out gets hammered down. And as much as I really love the Japanese culture, I don't claim to fully understand it. But these words stayed with me because they help to explain the conformity of our own culture, the incredulity that dreams are viewed with, and the immense fear of rejection that paralyzes so many of us. Well. Nobody likes to look like that idiot, you know, compared to the wise majority of your friends who've got their lives all figured out. The ones with, well, the job offers, high-paying job offers, even before graduation, you will hear of them. Or the ones who have made those applications to every single Fortune 500 company out there. Not that there's anything wrong with that, and actually I've been there myself. But the question I want to pose to you today is, are you willing to take a step back, search your soul, and listen to what your dreams are telling you. Because there I was, three months after graduation and, well, clueless about what I really wanted to do with my life. I had been a budding Marcom student in SMU and was blessed with professors who, yes, I'm wearing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's on purpose. <laughs> I was blessed with professors who saw the worth in me and helped to pave, this, pave my way to several internship opportunities at advertising agencies which I always had to turn down because of a clashing schedule somewhere. But these opportunities made me realize that I was good enough you know, to enter any ad agency I wanted to, or at least I thought so, because people said I was good, I had a good portfolio, and so in some sense of the way of, of, of it, you could say that I was all set to reach out and fling my dreams into reality the minute I finished up with school. Well, Unfortunately, joining the creative department of an advertising agency, a well-known one, isn't exactly easy when you don't have formal training or years of experience. So as much as I was, as I was dreaming of writing those brilliant taglines or thinking up those great ad campaigns which would win a lot of awards, nothing was happening. No, no one replied my applications. And it happens. It could happen to any one of us, and it happened to me. But to be honest, at that point in time, I wasn't even sure whether I wanted to write ads anymore. And this is not being sour grips. I really didn't know. Because I had been involved in two social campaigns. The first one being the No Place Like Home campaign, which was a campus-wide initiative to get SMU students to return home earlier, spend more time with their family. And of course, the I Still Have a Dream project. These experiences made me realize that I really enjoyed using what I had as a creative in meaningful, make a dent in the world ways. So I started considering non-profit organizations as well, 
something I'd never done before. But they also required their applicants to have formal training and years of experience, neither of which I had, which led me to another dead end. And this is our famous Catch-22 that you understand once you graduate. Yeah, take a Do you understand it? <laughs> so, I mean, I was thinking to myself, you know, if dreams were supposed to be a compass to my destiny, I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. I was lost, totally lost. And I, could, I had heard all the, all the horror stories, you know, some of you may, may have heard them before. Fresh graduates who took more than a year to find a job, and after a year, having to settle for just some job they came across because they just couldn't possibly go unemployed any longer. And I could see myself as a reacher, 30 years old and still unemployed. Or, or worse, if I caved in and settled finally, 30 years old and in a job that had nothing to do with what I ever dreamed of doing. And I was seriously beginning to question, you know, was, was I wrong about the power of dreams in the end? And would my life end up on the wrong side of the cardboard confession after all? Because everyone around me was more or less settling. All my friends were finding jobs here and there. And except me. It was making me look stupid, actually. The nail that stuck out, you could say. But there is a line in the I Still Have a Dream video, if you caught it, that goes, if you don't stand up for your dreams, who will? And even in my despair, mercilessly tempted to send those 1,000 resumes to the 1,000 companies I could find on some public job portal, I fought hard to stay true to my belief that I was made to fill a certain gap in the world as a thinker, dreamer, and writer. Call me an idealist, but what's the point of being alive if you don't at least try to do something remarkable with every step you take? Well, it's, it's difficult, right? And it's a painful process because the people who love you the most will object the most. Remember this. And, but the great thing is that it will lead you to a place whereby you have to be brave, you have to be strong about the choices that you make. Even though there's temptation everywhere to settle for something less than what you want, the truth is all you have to do is just get so much stronger than that to avoid going down to where your dreams are pointing you. And that's a simple yet powerful tip I want to leave with you today. Be brave. There is a story of a man who had a recurring dream of a lion. Okay? Every night he would dream of the lion, and the lion would, it was, it was very fierce, so it would chase him, chase him, he would run, and he would run until he would fall to the ground in fatigue, upon which he would awake screaming. Unsure of what the dream meant and desperate to make it stop, the man decides to consult his uh, pastor and ask for some help. The kind-hearted pastor does offer some advice as to what the lion could be. Was it the man's boss? Was it his wife? Or some big decision he had to make? But the man grew frustrated as he listened to these possibilities because as rational as he sounded, nothing seemed to match up to the intensity of the dreams that he was having. So unable to help him any further, the pastor decides to just pray with him and ask God for help. And after praying, the pastor tells the man, you know, the next time you dream of the lion, I want you to turn around and ask him these three things. Who he is, what he wants, and what he's doing in your life. Slightly disappointed that the pastor couldn't help him further, the man reluctantly agrees. And that night, he really dreams of the lion again. And his first instinct is to take off running in the opposite direction. He runs. He runs until midway he remembers what the pastor told him and too tired to fight his fears anymore, decides to just listen. So he turns around, faces the lion and goes, who are you? And the lion replies, why are you running from me? I am your courage. Settling is a lot easier than following your dreams, I give you that. Because chasing your dreams, reaching for your dreams, opens you up to risk, to heartache and other humbling repercussions. The nail that sticks out gets hammered down. Running away from the lion beats getting eaten by it, right? But what happens if you choose to make that radical decision to live a radical life? What happens if you choose to turn around and face your lion? Not long after I posted the I Still Have a Dream video to YouTube, I was contacted by a girl named Yi Hui on Facebook. And through her, I made friends with Josiah, whom you guys heard earlier today, whose end is up there. <laughs> I also came, she also told me about this creative agency called Yellow Octopus. 
She said they had done great social campaigns in the past and hoped that one day all of us could collaborate and do a social campaign together. Well, secretly for myself, I went back to the website many times to look at the portfolio because, I mean, it was really good stuff. And it did cross my mind to just apply for a job there since I was jobless. But after being ignored by every other creative agency out there, I was quite certain that no one in the industry saw any worth in me. And so I didn't. Until one night in July, that's three months later, and a day before my graduation ceremony, my brother Benjamin brings home a name card from this Bible study he had randomly visited that, that day. He said he had no idea who or what Yellow Octopus was, but it had to be a cool company because the name card changed colour when you touched it. Yes, you can ask me for one later. Anyway, yeah, so I, I described that epic turn of events as you know, an electrifying touch of destiny. Like, whoa, like, of all companies, it's Yellow Octopus. And my brother was shocked when I was like, you have Yellow Octopus's name card. And so despite, you know, the reason why it was so cool is because it belonged to the managing director of Yellow Octopus. Of all people, right? The managing director, the owner of Yellow Octopus. Yeah, and so despite my fears, I was quite sure it was some divine cue. So I sent my portfolio and resume across anyway. And the next day, Kevin replies saying that, oh, no, no, they're not hiring. But they liked what they saw in me and didn't mind meeting up for a chat. I mean, what's a chat, right? But thankfully, I have friends who really believed in my dreams as well. And you should surround your people, your, yourself with people like that. And they reminded me that if I really wanted something in life, I was, going to go all, I was going to need to go all out and get it somehow, even if it took sacrificing stuff. And true enough, I had to sacrifice a job, in, uh, a job offer that came in from another company that week whilst I was waiting for the chat. I sacrificed it. I told them no. But the amazing thing was that on the day that I met Kevin for the first time, and talking, after talking to him for two hours, he offers me a job as their creative writer, and that's where I've been ever since. Always be true to yourself. Use your dreams to guide you and be brave. The nail that sticks out has the best chance of making a dent in the world. And the one who turns to face the lion will be met with the courage he needs to reach for his dreams. And well, when you settle not to settle, the two sides of your cardboard confession will finally be reconciled. Thank you.